so I'm gonna try to make this short mostly because I'm egregiously sweating in a room which is um, 80 plus degrees possibly 90 plus I don't know right now um, because I can't have fans on while recording I don't have that good an equipment um, or software or whatever but the point is that like I'm gonna make this short I think if I can and then maybe follow up on some of these subjects at some point but ultimately I just wanted to get the point across that the Internet Archive is being attacked right now and has basically been being attacked for the past two years by a group of mega corporate publishers yeah so they basically started an open library during the pandemic that said because people are being forced inside libraries are being closed and they can't go to them will make books available in a very similar way to how they would be lent at a library which makes fucking sense unless you want stupid people who can't do their own research anyway I'm sure that's not it um, so it makes sense um, you know, it totally, totally justifiable, um, to, uh, sue them. Uh, because mega corporations don't like people, uh, getting stuff for free when it infringes upon their widow profits. So I figured I would, uh, go through some of the stuff that has been brought up and some of the people saying it because I think it's valuable to know who you're talking about so let's start with the source material um shall we this is the authors guild man oh shucks it seems like such a genuine and uh, honest place you know the authors guild who could go against a guild of poor little authors well that would be me uh, so they are a verified account as you can see they have 37.2 thousand followers and uh, they um, advertise themselves as Authors working together to ensure fair pay, protect copyright, and defend free speech. Defending free speech by blocking people's ability to share words and images online is such a wild set of mental gymnastics that only is possible when you live in an unfree society. A society of statism that controls and coerces people. But that's exactly what this is, and that's exactly what this is the result of. So, uh, you know, you get what you get, and you don't get upset. I get upset, though. I'm still going to get upset. So, in the spirit of getting upset, um, here is the uh, thread that they wrote, which is in, like essentially a summary of it and we'll get back to Maria Palanti soon um, she starts the Internet Archive has wrapped its large-scale infringement enterprise in a cloak of public service but that posture is an affront to the most basic principles of copyright law I must stop its scanning and distribution of in copyright books without permission from authors and publishers it's illegal, and it hurts authors. Here's hoping the court puts an end to this practice and upholds authors. Upholds authors! Controlled digital lending is a theory that has no basis in law, yet IA uses it to justify illegal scanning and distribution of in-copyright books and to authors' rights under our laws and the Constitution. It's about time the court stepped in and shut down this charade. Did you know the median income of full-time authors is 20300 per year? That's below the federal poverty guidelines for a family of four. 
If IA and its supporters cared about books, they would care about authors. Instead of trampling on their rights, they would work with authors. Authors resoundingly hold, told IA that what it was doing was unethical and illegal and asked it to stop. We even offered to work with IA to come up with a licensing solution, but IA refused to engage. It broke the law with impunity and now it must face consequences. The open library catalog is not limited to public domain books. It has thousands of books that are in copyright and in print. These unauthorized scans directly compete with copies and library licenses from which authors earn an income. Books are national treasures. The United States is fortunate to have so many award-winning authors dedicated to their craft, enriching the nation's culture. It's long past time for the court to step in and shut down this charade. To learn more. So, let's start with the large scale infringement enterprise. Um, no. Uh, for reasons that we'll go over a little bit later, they're not intending to infringe anything. Let's be clear. And then, um, <laughs> I must stop. We said so on Twitter. And look at it. They're getting ratioed. They got ratioed so fucking hard. Look at this. 50 to 31, 67 to 31. This is a hard ratio. So that's what happened. Um, they're like, they must stop. We told them on Twitter. And we're telling them in court because telling them on Twitter clearly doesn't get us anywhere. Because they provide a service and we leech off of artistic properties. Um, <laughs> no basis in law. So, yeah, because it's digital lending, it has no basis in law. I'll go over that a little bit later, too. Um, but basically, they, uh, they didn't, like, stop anyone from buying anything. Like, somebody who's going to buy a book is still going to buy a book, and somebody who is not going to buy a book is still not going to buy a book. Um, and, and because of something that I'll go over before I click the link here, because I think it's valuable for people to know, um, like, you know, uh, basically you don't even buy books when you buy them online. Yeah, uh, so... <laughs> the median full-time income of authors is $20,300 a year. Well, first off, that's not telling us anything because it's not telling us about the quality of the fucking books. It, like... So, maybe an author is getting ripped off. Maybe the author just isn't good. And maybe the median, the average, is coming after, like, a whole bunch of books that either didn't get picked up by publishers like yours, or that just weren't very good. So maybe the median author's income would be higher if you didn't fucking gatekeep so much. Shucks, man, shit. Fuck, that can't be it. It has to be Internet Archive's fault, and anybody who downloads a PDF, fucking yeah, that's it. Anyway... Authors resoundingly told IA that what it was doing was unethical and illegal. Well, which ones? Fucking which ones? Because you're retweeting any author who says, like, you know, ah, Internet Archive is bad! But you're not, like, looking. You're not responding to any of the authors who are criticizing you. And some of them have literally pulled out their membership. They're not doing it anymore because you fucking alienated them by claiming to speak for them even though there are only four very mega corporate publishing houses in your fucking lawsuit. Because you're fucking doing the same shit that so many people do. Ew, we have an organization. That means we speak for people. No, you speak for those people. You don't speak for everyone else, and you should shut the fuck up about everyone else. Don't say authors. Say our authors that we like and that we're not ignoring. You fucking hacks. Um, 
And yeah, it's not limited to public domain books. You know what else isn't limited to public domain books? The fucking library. So uh, let me just uh, move on to the other part here. I'll pause this for a second. So here is the article. <laughs> Copyright. American publishers file for summary judgment against the Internet Archive. They sued the Internet Archive in June 2020 for copyright infringement. Now American publishers file for summary judgment. Pelland and cloak of public service. In a week roiled by difficult news, not least today's July 8th assassination of Japan's Shinzo Abe for pre <laughs> 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 Fucking yeah. Oh, we're so we're we're just, you know, we're so damn broken up about the assassination of Shinzo Abe. <laughs> what would we ever do without Shinzo Abe? We need Shinzo Abe here. In our article, we need to reference that and the fact that other actually important shit is going on instead of our profits taking a small hit because people are downloading PDFs. Oh, the humanity. Won't somebody think of Shinzo Abe? <laughs> and they just include it in the same sentence. <laughs> Not least today's July 8th assassination of Japan's Shinzo Abe. J Japan's Shinzo Abe acting like he's just on some sports team. Four, four primary member publishers of the AAP have filed a motion for summary judgment against the Internet Archive. In this case, that has been international, that has international implications because of the reach of internet connectivity. A summary judgment is a way for one party to win a case without a trial. <laughs> you don't want a trial! They want a kangaroo court so they can just bounce in and get what they want. But won't somebody think of Shinzo Abe? Like, they, they threw that in there to say, Ooh, it's such just a tragedy, just like this, it's Shinzo Abe. We feel so bad for them. Um, so, now that we're thoroughly into this, as publishing perspectives readers will recognize, this is a stage in two years of litigation that began in early June 2020, when the publishers... Three of them, among the big five, filed a copyright infringement lawsuit against the Internet Archive and the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York. Those plaintiff publishers, Hatchet Book Corp, or Group, HarperCollins Publishers, John Wiley and Sons, and Penguin Random House. A 2020 lawsuit asked the court to enjoin the San Francisco-based Internet Archive scanning, public display, and distribution of entire literary works which it has offered to the international public through what the association terms global-facing businesses, branded the Open Library and National Emergency Library. <laughs> As you'll remember, the Internet Archive responded by claiming that its operations in the Open Library and shorter-lived National Emergency Library were couched in a concept called Control Digital Lending, that it asserted would protect its use of copyrighted content without payment or permission as a form of fair use in some cultures called fair dealing. And its media messaging related to us, or released to us from embargo shortly before midnight on Thursday, June 7, the association says that after two, those two years of litigation, the motion for summary judgment establishes a clear record showing that both the law and facts of the case are undisputedly in the publisher's favor. So, this is a bullshit article. I'm not going to read it all, much less in that voice. I'm going to scroll like I do sometimes, just so you can read the article if you want. But, I think it's f fucking valuable to note um, that... This is not all authors. It is four of the big five. 
So one part of the big five declined. And these other four part of the big five, they've got a problem with it. And then they bring up this woman who's got like a singular case against it. Like just Sandra here has a case against it. They claim to speak for authors, yet in their press release, they could only find one case to discuss. Doesn't that fucking shock anyone? Well, it shouldn't, because here we get to the bottom of the page, where you can find out all you want to know about why these people think that. First off, let's look at this. CNN.com, CNN International, CNN USA, The Village Voice, The Dallas Times Herald, and The Tampa Tribune. Now The Tampa Bay Times. Just a bunch of mainstream media, that's what this guy's for. That's what this guy's written. Um, so, of course, you would side with mainstream publishers. That's not a surprise. And then you scroll to the bottom, and you find out, hey, shucks, a oh, golly gee. Um, this is a website owned by a... Uh, organization called Frankfurter Buchmesse and operated at MVB US Inc. Now what are those two? Stick around for more information. This is MVB. They do PubNet. The website that was supporting this article, this press release, that was designed to back this Trial-free litigation, kangaroo court, bullshit. This website is run by people who are affiliated with PubEasy. Now, what's PubEasy, you ask? Well, PubEasy is PubNet. And what PubNet is, is it's a platform for uh, ebook distribution and digital content distribution. So... The site that released this press release is directly affiliated with an organization whose responsibility it is to make these books. Now, why does all that matter? Well, I guess I was wrong about saying this before I clicked the article. But basically, um, these people do licensed work. They don't do ownership when you buy buy a fucking book from one of these people in epub or pdf format you're not buying the book you're not buying the file you are buying a license to it the people who distribute these files are not distributing these files on a book buying basis they don't own the books either they are middlemen between you and somebody like PubNet and somebody like Simon & Schuster, Penguin, Random House, all these fucking things. Just license these books to these middlemen. And then these middlemen say, hey, we'll also give you a license. It's sort of like subletting property. It's not actually yours. You're just borrowing it in exchange for not using it in a way they dislike picture anything else being treated like that right this isn't just like you know this kind of file I like the reason I know about this is because I looked up similar legal precedent to this and lawyers have written about the fact that basically in like 2010 the Ninth Circuit Court ruled that anything like this was on a license basis you don't own these books these books are being lent to you on a license basis. And they can claim that you broke the license if they want to claim that you did copyright infringement so that we can sue you without a trial and hope that people don't ask too many questions so that we can take you for all your worth and shut you down. You evil cretin, you took everything from us even though we're still standing in better than ever and even though we're not paying our people very well. We're going to take you for everything you're worth. That's what that is. 
These people have the lowest effort possible distribution platform. And they are saying that this open archive system, which basically acts as nothing more than free advertising for them, is a threat to their bottom line! Where? I don't see it. Like, this is easy. This is easy to do. You could do this tomorrow. You could set up a server, get your books some ISBNs, and route them through it. You could set your own EDI community up. It's not hard. These people aren't providing a real service other than basically data storage. In fact, the difference between an EDI and other distribution methods is that an EDI goes directly from one thing to another. So they are creating a hands-free system that requires basically zero operating power, raking in a huge amount of profits, and then saying that open library is taking food off their table. Where? Anybody who knows how these industries work knows that this is state capitalist corruption at its finest. And if you need further evidence, let me introduce you to this diagram. EDI replaces manual B2B business-to-business -business communications such as postal mail, fax, and email. Documents flow directly from the sender's computer application, e.g. a logistics system, to the receiver's computer application, e.g. an order management system. You do the sale automatically. It requires basically no effort. It's hands-free. The profit just rolls in. And you take your little cut for hosting a link to the file on your site. That's what this is. That's all it is. It, it's the file system equivalent of drop shipping, And that's why this site is totally invested in other people who do this without the cut not getting anything and being shut down despite all the other valuable services they provide. And gee golly damn... Uh, Internet Archive being threatened right around the time when people might be archiving a lot of sensitive data around leaks, around a powerful family, maybe, a family of entitled cunts and vindictive morons, crack addicts, hmm, I wonder. Um, so... I just think that's fucking funny that this site is so transparently corrupt. And there's more. So this is the MVB site. And this is their what we represent section. With our true passion for books, we advocate for a shared language that can be used uniformly across borders to clearly describe and thus search for and find books. They mean a search engine. They mean a search engine. They mean that you put your information into a search engine and it comes out with information regarding books. Like I said, it's entirely hands-free, requires extremely low manpower, and basically no work. <laughs> Moreover, we've been investing in the inter internationalization of our business for years. After all, that's what allows more and more people in the book industry to benefit directly from our expertise and digitize their processes, making books as visible as possible, both home and abroad. At the same time, this growth ensures we can operate our platforms economically. Dirt cheap is, is the normie translation. Dirt cheap. Despite the ongoing need for modernization and the consolidation taking place in the markets. Because of the big four or five whatever thing that you encourage with lawsuits like that. Huh? That's not consolidation? 
So I just thought I'd bring all that up. You know, I thought I'd bring all that up in relation to this group of people. This is the actual site for the people who are uh, suing. And it's not very well designed, just to say the least. But uh, let's let's just scroll here. You know, writers who can't write a website. Um, <laughs> the Association for American Publishers represents the leading book journal and education publishers in the U.S. on matters of law and policy, advocating for outcomes that incentivize the publication of creative expression, professional content, and learning solutions. As essential participants in the local markets and the global economy, our members invest and inspire the exchange of ideas, transforming the world we live in one word at a time. So, who are they? Well, <laughs> their priorities. Strong copyright policies protecting free speech while, <laughs> while blocking people from publishing things they don't like and trying to hope that they don't get a trial, or promoting the advancement of research and scholarship, our focus is on the central role that publishers play in enhancing our culture, education, workforce, and democracy. Advocating for strong copyright laws, promoting a free and transparent marketplace, unless it's free and transparent, and protecting freedom of expression and the free exchange of ideas, unless the expression is free, and the ideas are free. Then you can't do it. Notice how they just completely change definitions on you? Well, that's because they're fucking lawyers. Look at this. There are so many lawyers in this organization. And if you look at their sponsors, look at these people and tell me that just like law firms and the book publishers... That, 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 that are, like, affiliated with those law firms aren't just what these things are. And that most of what these book publishers have moved to isn't fucking EPUBs through the same platforms that I discussed before, just platforms that make it all fucking easy. It's just lawyers and the people that represent, or that they represent. That's it. That's all. You know? So... Look at all these lawyers, look at all these publishing houses, and then look at all these people affiliated with them. Look at all this experience in the literal government, and tell me that this lawsuit is about the little guy. Tell me that this lawsuit is about the little guy when these are their resumes. You know? Tell me that this is about raising the amount that, co that, 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 that authors make from 20000 to a higher amount. Because I don't fucking believe that for a second. I think that these people don't give a fuck. And also, let me be clear when I say that, um, that, that like this whole lawsuit thing, the big five are a bunch of publishers that have regularly got into like legal trouble, which is why they need all these lawyers to fucking begin with. You know? That's why they need it. And all these fucking official institutions, of course, they wouldn't want people to have anything free because these people rely on people relying on them. It's, it's like, you know how when you go to college, you need a certain amount of money in order to get fucking textbooks because the textbooks are insanely priced? That's why. They're insanely priced because of people like this. Keeping things expensive, keeping you away from the fucking free options, and then suing anyone who dares to criticize their media practices by doing better. That's who these people are. And watch, this video gets me sued too. Because they don't care about the little guy. They don't care about me being below poverty. Hey, links in the description. This is a Creative Commons licensed work. You can distribute my content. I'm not a hypocrite. And I support free speech. That's the reality. That's what you have to do 
to support free speech. So what was Internet Archive's response to all of this? Well, they released this excellent video. And I'm going to play that for you here right now. Libraries mean a lot to me. Um, and uh, there are these weird ideas that people have about libraries. Like, um, a library can't lend a book unless the copyright holder gives them permission. That's just like, as the physicists say, that's not even wrong. Like, it, like that, that's bizarro land talk. Like, there has never been... An, a world in which libraries only got to lend books when authors gave them permission because I'm a library and I went out and I bought the book uh, and um, now I get to lend it out because that's how copyright works and it's not a violation of copyright to buy a book and lend it out it is copyright to buy a book and lend it out that that is that is part of the copyright bargain and so you know this this unilateral conversion of all digital materials from something you can own to something that you can be a mere tenant of through a license agreement is um, genuinely wicked, right? It's, a, it's wrong, and it's, it's not, a, it's not a, 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 a regime that people who advocate for it in their own little corner of the world would tolerate in everything else, right, if, if they're car stopped working because there was a license dispute between the automaker and the company that made the firmware for their anti-lock brakes, they would be very rightly furious. That guy is a fucking author. Look at this. He's an author. You know? He's an author and he disagrees with them, which is almost why they shouldn't be doing this thing where they say, Athers resoundingly told IA that it was, what it was doing was unethical. Which authors? Which fucking authors? Because it wasn't all of them. Don't be fucking general. Be fucking specific. So they got ratioed pretty hard. They got ratioed pretty hard, right? Right? This is a good series of responses. But, like, let's be super clear and say that this would be a threat to free speech. Internet Archive, if it gets destroyed by these mega corporations and their mega corporate lawyers, Internet Archive has a huge amount of good information that helps people. It helps people in legal trouble. It helps people in restrictive countries. It helps people, uh, you know, get access to arts that they would not otherwise be able to because they're fucking censored in their country. It, it's fucking better. You know? Four publishers file for summary judgment. That means that, you know, you don't get a trial. That's it. That's all that means. So, I think, understandably, people were sort of righteously furious because the Internet Archive is a valuable resource. They help people. And, and like, there's a good series of responses here. There are some people that have pulled out their support of the fucking uh, Authors Guild because it's a guild. It, it represents a specific group of authors, right? And Internet Archive is over here um, laying it down and getting much better response. I fucking wonder why. Well, if you look at Internet Archive's tweets, they've been uh, extremely forthcoming about everything. And they've been extremely, like, you know honest about their position here and there's like a ton of reasons to support what they're saying did you know that the internet archive has a physical archive that houses millions of books as in actual physical paper books for every book that we lend to users online we have a physical copy that is preserved in our archive we get our books the same way as other libraries 
We buy books and we receive donated books. Some of those donations come from libraries that are reevaluating their physical collections, like Hamilton Public Library. And some books come to us from libraries that are shutting down forever, like Mary Grove College. The school closed in 2019 rather than sell off the collection. The board donated the entire library to us for preservation and digitization. So for each of the 65,000 books now available to borrow from the Mary Grove College collection at uh, that link, the actual book we scanned has been preserved in our physical archive. But those physical books don't circulate. Rather than circulate the physical book we own, we lend a scanned digital copy of the book to one user at a time through the library practice known as controlled digital lending. Here's how it works. Meet Leonard. He's 82 and loves reading about World War II history. But the nearest library branch is 50 miles away and he can only get there a couple times a year. This is Nina. She's 16 and wants to be an environmental scientist. Because she has dyslexia, Nina uses a special device to read. But it's hard to get the book she needs in any digital format. As a result, she's falling behind. For centuries, libraries have put books into the hands of those who need them, helping millions to build better lives and creating informed citizens. But many people still face barriers to accessing knowledge. Thankfully, a practice called controlled digital lending is already helping to bridge these divides. It works like this. Let's say a library buys a book. That's what libraries do. They buy lots and lots of books. The library scans the book, and now they have a digital version to lend as well. In the CDL system, if the patron checks out the digital copy, the hard copy becomes inaccessible. And if a second reader wants to borrow that digital version, she has to wait for it to be returned. CDL uses digital rights management technology to ensure at the end of your digital loan, the file gets locked and automatically deleted. The same tools that ebook publishers use to prevent piracy. Controlled digital lending is a common sense evolution of what libraries have been doing for centuries, buying books and loaning them to patrons for free. It gives Nina access to millions of titles that work with her adaptive reading device. It means that even in a pandemic, Leonard can continue learning while staying safe. And think about the future of learning. We can search through a million books in just a few seconds. And we can rest assured that these digitized books will be available for future generations, safe from damage or disaster. With controlled digital lending, libraries continue to fulfill their essential mission, making knowledge accessible to everyone. For more information or to support controlled digital lending, visit empoweringlibraries.org. So, this video was not, in fact, short, but see what I mean? You see what I mean? This is what these mega corporations want to stop. This is what these mega corporations want to stop without. A trial. Internet Archive shouldn't even get their day in court, according to these people. No due process, nothing. Just file it, push it through with your massive team of fucking lawyers and your mega corporate fucking money and hope that they don't fight back. Because they're too small, and they're smaller than you are. That's not helping the little guy. That's not preserving free speech. That's evil. And I have zero problem saying so. I'm going to take some time to edit this. And I'm going to release it a day late. I hope the wait was worth it, y'all. But basically, this is something that really pisses me off. Because I need information to do my fucking job. I am below poverty. Feel free to support me in the links in the description. Um, and I am personally writing multiple books right fucking now. Will I mind if they are put on the internet archive? Fuck 
No! Well, I want this massive team of fucking mega corporations and lawyers to back me up in getting people censored over it. No! Some of these books are books I've been putting blood, sweat, and tears into for years. All of these books mean a lot to me. And when I do eventually put them out, I hope they're actually bought. But I will be selling them myself, because fuck these people. When I sell my books, you will get a book. Not a license to a book! You will be able to do with this book what you want. Because it's yours! Not some mega corporations to fuck with. And that's the way it should be. An internet archive did nothing wrong. So, I hope... This isn't a summary trial. I hope whichever legal system they decide to go through has some balls and says, fuck no, we're not going to give you a summary judgment. Present your goddamn evidence at trial just like the rest of the plebs. Huh? I hope so. But who knows? This is an evil and corrupt system and they support evil and corrupt people, which is why I've been Jeremiah Harding. Smash the fuck out.